In this problem, we want to determine the value of f to make our resultant as small as possible, and we also want to determine what our resultant magnitude is. And I'm going to show you first geometrically what this problem is asking, how you can solve this geometrically, and then a more structured approach to solving this problem. So first, what is this problem asking? Uh, so let's draw this, this five kilonewtons here. We want a four, we're gonna do vector addition. So here we have four kilonewtons. And here we have just a line that represents some magnitude of F. And we don't know what that length F is, but the condition is that if this is my resultant, we want this resultant to be a minimum. So as I move my resultant up and down this line of F, it becomes a minimum when it's a 90 degree angle uh, with that force F. But how do we find the actual magnitude numbers? Well, we can do it geometrically if the problem's nice and, uh, e nice and easy enough. And I'm gonna just show you by putting that into a drawing program. So this is five. Coming down is four. And then we don't know this length. And we, really what's hard is maybe you don't even know really what side is it coming to uh, when you're trying to draw this, which makes it more difficult. Uh, but this is 30 degrees. So my resultant is what I'm drawing in now. We know this needs to be a perpendicular angle, and that is. So, okay. This and this now get merged together. So what are these lengths? Well, this is a length of 2.33. And this right here is a length of 5.96. And this, these are the magnitudes. So you can see that. So I want to remember those two numbers, 2.33 and 5.96. So I should get the same number when I go through a procedure uh, that's a little bit more structured. Maybe the problem is a little too complicated geometrically to use geometry and trigonometry, or your professor just says, hey, you can't use, uh, you can't use geometry. You have to use this approach. So what is this approach? Well, what I call, what I'm calling the resultant equation is it comes from the Pythagorean theorem. We've used it a lot that my resultant force FR, the magnitude is equal to the square root of the sum of my components in the x direction squared plus the sum of the components in my y direction squared. Now, we need each of these terms. So what is the sum of my components in the x direction squared? I'm gonna say this way is positive x, going up is positive y. So I'm gonna have, it's the square root of, first, this is only in the positive direction, so it's a five. Uh, F is going in the negative direction, so it's going to be minus F times the sine of 30 squared. So then plus, well, what's happening in the Y direction? Four is pointing downward, so it's a minus four. And this F is pointing upward, so it's a positive. That component is F times the cosine of 30 squared. And all that's under the square root. And this is equal to FR. So at this point, you might be going, well, I'm trying to solve for FR, but I don't know what F is. I don't know how to use this equation. And if you're trying to determine a, a minimum resultant force, so FR is a minimum with respect to some variable, in this case, F, if we take the derivative of both of these and we set them equal to zero, set that derivative, derivative equal to zero, we'll be able to solve for one of our variables. Now, this is gonna take just a little bit of work to get 
it into a nicer form for an easier derivative. So I like to do a lot of this work up front. First of all, just for ease, I'm going to put everything instead of under a square root symbol, I'm gonna put it under uh, one half power. It's the same thing. It's just, I think better with derivatives that way. Right, this is an equivalent expression. So now I need to go and I need to square both these terms. And I'm gonna leave that side off for right now. Uh, so this is gonna be, what, 25, minus uh, 10f sine of 30 plus f squared sine squared 30. So that's this. And then plus 16 minus 8 times the cosine of 30 plus f squared times the cosine squared of 30, and that's to the 1 half. So it's just an equivalent expression right now. Move it over just a little bit. Okay. So now we can go and we can combine this. This right here is a minus 5. This right here, we need to bring the calculator up. So minus eight times the cosine of 30. It's gonna be minus six, we'll call it minus 6.93. Uh, and I, I lost an F on this one. So this, this needs an F, I lost that. So if I combine like terms, what do I get? I get this is 41. Uh, again, again, I lost an F here. So if I combine those terms, it's going to be minus 11.93F. And then what happens on this term? Well, I can factor out the F squared. And if I do that, so F squared sine squared 30 plus F squared cosine squared 30 Factor out an F squared, I get sine squared 30 plus cosine squared 30. And hopefully you see that this relationship right here is just equal to one. So I'm only left with F squared. So I get plus F squared, and this is to the one half. All right, so now I wanna take the derivative of this term and the derivative isn't as straightforward as you might think it is. You need to do the chain rule because we do have this like pesky square root out here. So if we take the derivative, first we need to do the square root. So it's going to be one half times everything in here stays the same. So 41 minus 11.93 F using the chain rule plus F squared to the, well, this becomes subtract one from it, so it's minus one half. And then we multiply it with the derivative of this inner term. So the inner term with respect to F, this term goes away. This term becomes minus 11.93, and the next term becomes plus two F. All right, let's, let's just rearrange this term one more time. So we wanna be careful here everything is being multiplied together. So the numerator was gonna be 11.93 plus two F divided by, all right, this two is in the denominator. Then all of this is in the denominator because it's the minus one half. So now we wanna set the derivative equal to zero and at this point, we can solve for what f is, right? Everything in the denominator right now, when we multiply by zero, just goes away. So we get zero is equal to 11.93 plus 2f. Solve for f. And we get 
oops, it's 11.93 because it is moved to the other side of the equation. So 11.93 divided by two, we get this is equal to 5.965. So F is equal to 5.965 kilonewtons. F is equal to 5.96. So now what we want to do is we want to go back to one of these equations. This one seems like it might be the easiest to work with uh, because we, this is a, we took the derivative of that, but that's really just my, right, if I work through, this is really just what FR is equal to. And then this next step was the, the derivative. Uh, so if we get my FR is equal, FR is equal to the square root of 41 minus 11.93 times 5.965 plus 5.965 squared. If we take the square root of that, we get this is equal to 2.33. Uh, so this is this is my resultant, and this force right here is my force F. And they match up with what the forces that I got geometrically were, but here I used a more step-by-step -step approach that you can follow when you're trying to figure out a magnitude of a force with a when you're trying to minimize a resultant. So hopefully this has helped you with that concept.